naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Eddie Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Welcome to uh, Naked Shamanism. Nism, nisms, I can't speak today. This is episode number nine. I am Iggy Garcia. I'm your host, and I'm here to share whatever I've gained and knowledge I've picked up along the way uh, about different types of uh, holistic work, metaphysical work, those in particularly in the Peruvian shamanism, and that's kind of what I base my foundation on. Uh, there are other types of work that I do as well. Don't really want to get into that too much today. If you want to visit my you can visit me at iggygarcia.com. That's my personal website where I actually do my uh, my holistic work, my practice, and the radio shows that I'm on. But I want to thank everybody for joining us here on Sprecher, uh, here on the studio. And, and we're getting ready to talk a little bit about a topic that's been brought up a lot lately. And that is, um, that has to deal with shamanism. That has to deal with the importance of what uh, the medicine's about. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the medicine the plant medicine is probably the huge and the most most uh, controversial uh, stuff right now and the things that we run into uh, plant medicine has been around us for eons you know as long as man has been around man has trying to find a way to connect with great spirit connect with god connect with the heavens and be in other places and teleport and transport you know physically emotionally spiritually and that's what we try to do so we are broadcasting live here on Facebook. For those of you there, I say hello. And those of you who are going to come back later and listen to this show, say hello. Uh, we are live on Sprecher, broadcasting, streaming. This is our ninth episode of this particular show. So I want to make sure everybody is, appreciates the work and the effort that we put into this here at With Insights Radio. And so... Talking about plant medicine, a lot of you are probably familiar with the plants called um, ayahuasca, peyote, San Pedro. Um, these are just the typical kinds of stuff that we speak about. Um, even cannabis, we talk about those kind of topics as well. Those plants uh, right now under the United States uh, code is is a Schedule One narcotic. Okay, so those, those are, if you're fine with them, you can get in a lot of trouble. So I recommend that you at least find a practitioner, if not here in the United States, maybe outside the country, that actually embraces those kinds of things. Uh, don't get yourself into trouble. Don't bring on things that will cause you more heart heartache and things like that. But here's the point that I bring up this topic on this show, why these plant medicines are important. It's important if you're going to learn this, how to use these, these plants, these medicines, then you have to find the right teacher the right teacher is important now i personally have ingested i personally have used a bit i don't administer i don't i'm not an ayahuasca minister i don't do that type of work because my calling that's not my calling that's not where spirit calls me and leads me and that's super important to understand (laughs) to be in the work that i do that you don't have to be everything for everybody and that's the misconception that we have to be everything for everybody and that we have to know all these different things there are so there's Shamanism is just a very generic word for someone who does the work. So, you know, we have debates. Oh, true shaman doesn't call himself a shaman, whatever. And I, and I get that. And I understand that. And I'm not here to debate that because that's like, we can go round and round a hundred million times with that one. But how do you find a, a good shaman? A lot of it's word of mouth. Somebody that you talk to, somebody that you've met. Somebody who's met one. Someone who's encountered one. Um... You know, in the spiritual world, in this particular world that we live in, this 3D, this 5D we travel through, there are other people who do this work who do it as if it was just a job. And, you know, they're just going to sell you another dosage. So you have to be very careful, you know, where you go, who you travel with. It's super important. It's kind of like knowing the farmer. If you know the farmer, then you know the food, where the source is coming from. The source is from Mother Earth, regardless. But who is who is the person giving you the medicine? 
That's important. You need to do your research. That's super important. You need to really study. There have been a lot of deaths because of ayahuasca and different types of uh, medicines because they're not used properly or they have not been ingested in the, in the proper way. And so is it safe? Nothing's safe. You can drink 10 gallons, uh, 10 bottles of water and die. Okay. It's, it's happened. So everything in moderation, everything, you know, with some kind of thinking, you know, what's going behind there. You don't just jump into things. That's why when we do ceremonies, it could be seven days to preparation. You know, prepare your body to ingest, to release. It's a super fast charge. Um, number one, detox. Number two, it's a super charge uh, acceleration to your mind. And some people are not ready to go into their mind. They may think they are. But that's why they do the prep. That's why the prep is so important while you're preparing and getting there. You can't just jump into this thing and just think it's going to be, oh, yeah. Because are you going to be ready emotionally and spiritually to challenge those and to pick up on those things? So why do these people die? Um, some people will agree with me and some people will disagree with me. Everybody has on the book somewhere, the, the Akashic Records or whatever you want to call it. God knows. But your day was that day. If you die tragically, if you die, you know, by natural causes, that was your day. Unfortunately, the tragic ones hurt us more because... We don't want to lose loved ones, but that happens. That happens a lot. So I'm here to say, you know, death is not a scary thing. We embrace death and we have to say, hey, you know, that's part of who we are as, as spiritual beings coming to this plane to experience this physical body. That's why we're here. So it's important to understand that we're all in this flesh. One day we'll release it. We let go of it. For some of us, it's very scary. I'm not going to lie to you. It's scary for me as well, but that's because that's part of life. That's part of the agreement that we've contracted to one day shed this skin, shed this temple. And that's why when we do these medicines, we have to understand that we have two temples. We have the spiritual temple and then we have the physical temple. They're not separate. They work together. And that's why we have to take care of this temple as much as we take care of the spiritual, the one we, we, we strive to get to. There's this like place that we want to be. I don't know. And you know, this body is beautiful as well as this spiritual aspect of ourselves that it's out here somewhere. But there is no out there, folks. There is no, it's all inside. It's all embedded. It's all intertwined. It's all like a ball of string wrapped up. And if you unravel it and it goes different places, but it's still a ball of string. You're still that string. And, but you never come back. You never come back into that same spool. You unspool and then you just reach out and you're experimenting, you're feeling, you're touching. So the ayahuasca plant is true medicine. Peyote, true medicine. All these are very powerful medicine. And these medicines, they you have to be careful with them. Because you may not be ready. And how do you know when you're ready? It, these plants call you. These plants call to you and they tell you. Even if you've read about it, there's a spiritual aspect to it. But they're not the only, only, only plants. I'm here to tell you something. In this world that we live in, in this world, there are medicine plants everywhere. You can walk out your back door and you'll find medicine plants there. You can open your kitchen cabinet. There's medicine plants there. Most of you probably have medicine plants in your in your refrigerator. Cilantro, cucumbers, tomatoes. Those are medicine plants. And you know, what does ayahuasca and what does peyote and those things do? They unleash and they open. It has the DMT, yes, like the ayahuasca, and then it releases. But the only times we actually have doses of DMT that are released in our body is when we're born. To come down the birth canal, DMT is released. And when we die, DMT is released. So you're playing on the line, the borderline of death, and you're there. So, for example, medicine plants. Medicine plants in our backyard, in our medicine cabinets. Aspirin, that's a medicine plant. That's derived from, you know, the willow tree, the bark. You know, that was used like 2,400 years ago. It's everywhere. Plant medicine's everywhere. It's how you hold it in, rever in reverence. If you hold it in reverence, then it's it's powerful medicine. 
And that's what we don't do. Sometimes we don't think that the salad we ate is very important. But it was good. Did it taste good when you put a little dressing on it? Was it good? What did it do? What did it release? Did you feel refreshed? Did you feel like the endorphins were running a little bit? That's the medicine. That's why we have to connect with our plants. Connect with the things we know. So many times we, we don't do that. We just take things for what they are. These medicines are powerful. But all these medicines that we work with, all these medicines, they're all here. They're all around us. Everywhere. You can walk out your door, you got a whole kitchen cabinet out in the back. If you learn, the process is learning. The process is connecting. The process is finding a medicine man. The process is finding a shamanic practitioner or somebody or an herbalist, somebody who knows these things to read up about it. But I also feel that reading out, reading is not enough. Reading is part of that. Acquiring that knowledge and putting it in your head. And knowing how much, when, when not to. So I encourage you to study and learn. I encourage you to, you know, partake in these medicines. But I also tell you with a little bit of caution. Know who's administering you these medicines. And I'm ta- when I'm talking about these medicines, I'm talking about ayahuasca. I'm talking about peyote, San Pedro, all these all these very powerful medicines. These are very powerful, powerful medicines. These are very accelerated, very punch-you-in-the-eye medicine and gets you to that place you need to be medicine. So make sure you know who's who's administering it. And it's, and it's a sad thing when people die using these medicines, but it happens. But it's our mind. When, we ha- when it's time to go, it's time to go. As cold as that may sound, and I don't mean to sound cold, but that's how it is. But I'm here to tell you that everything, the tree, the cedars, the sages, the things you burn, those are all medicines. Very powerful medicines. But the thing is, we have to know and we have to understand that. Some of us will never have ayahuasca journeys. But you don't have to have an ayahuasca journey to feel these these chemicals released in your body. You can dance, you can sing, and you release these chemicals in your body. But you have to do it. But we have to give thanks to the plants that we have around us. Even the beautiful ones that we want to look at. Super important. So many of us just go every day and we just use things. We discard them like they're nothing. And you know, and that's, and that's a shame. These medicines love unconditionally. But if they're not used properly, you can be very sick and very ill. And that's something we don't want you to do. You know, and there's a lot of practitioners out there. And do your research. And, you know, even if you read something negative, do your research on the negative writer. You have to understand that some there's a lot of things that people write about other things because they just don't like each other or don't get along. You know, I'm sure they're out there somewhere and there's a post about me that, you know, they just don't like me. And that's okay. But that's I don't care. Because I like me. I'm pretty cool with myself. That's why you have to work and do the research both sides. You can't just be one-sided. Oh, look at all these negatives. But then there's always like four or five people who help very strongly. But then there's other people who didn't have any effect. And that's that's what I'm trying to say. Sometimes we take these medicines and nothing happens. And then sometimes we take these medicines and we're like totally out of our mind. Now, I personally don't need to have ayahuasca all the time. It doesn't necessarily call to me like in that fashion. Because it's not a recreational thing. <clears throat> and that's the problem. Ayahuasca is becoming a, a recreational thing. And the plant knows this. The plant recognizes this. As much as you probably don't think that this plant is like you or me, sometimes it's more evolved than us. A plant that can take us deep into our mind, deep into our spirit, into our soul, is very powerful. The lena, <clears throat> the rope, that spiritual rope, that's just... You know, it has it has a conscience of its own. And when it intertwines with us, remember, we're from the earth. So we're, we're, we have this 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 makeup, this this written code that we don't understand about ourselves. Sometimes it's there. So when we take this medicine, it unlocks things about us. The deepest things inside of us that we're not sometimes willing to see. Now, we all return to the earth one day. All of us will. 
there's not one of us here who will not return to the earth and be reconstituted and reused. The earth will live. The earth's a living thing. Lives, breathes, cries, laughs, becomes angry. If you don't believe me, just turn on the news. Check out something that happened. Check out this, this storm that's coming. Check. She has her cycles, kind of like we have cycles. Females have cycles. Men have cycles. We have these cycles. But plant medicine is everywhere. So I'll, I'll take anybody on with that one. Plant medicine is everywhere. All around us. Maybe you don't understand it. Maybe you don't know it. Dandelion, plant medicine. Yarrow, plant medicine. Clover, plant medicine. You know, plantain that grows in the ground looks like a big leaf. Plant medicine. Burdock, plant medicine. These are things that grow in your in your yard or along the freeway. Along, this just, you know, you always got to look. Grass. I've seen people use grass. Some people buy grass and they eat it. You know? So, you know, seaweed, plant medicine. It's all around us. It's in our food. You can't get away from it. You have a relationship with plant medicine all the time, every single day. And if you're a vegan, even more. And even the meats you eat, you have plant medicine. You have a relationship even with the animals that have eaten other plant medicines. Plant medicine is key to our survival as well. We have to eat. And those greens are important. So when you understand that the plant medicine is all around us, in your refrigerator, at the store, in your backyard, then you're ahead of the game. And to separate the camps from ayahuasca and a cucumber. Cucumber has a lot of benefits that ayahuasca doesn't have. You know? It's 90, 98% water. You know, it's good for your, to detox you, to cleanse you, to clear you. You know? And for those of you who have never done ayahuasca, and if those of you who are on live the live feed, if you've done ayahuasca, just, just thumbs up me, let me know. A happy face or whatever, because... Ayahuasca is not for everybody. Some people can handle it. Some people can't. Ayahuasca is very powerful medicine. And if you're ready to explore things about yourself and to go deep inside, you see this picture behind me? Ayahuasca, that's just one little frame of ayahuasca, the colors. The colors are amplified. The feelings are amplified. Your emotions are amplified. Everything, you just, you're just amplified. You're connected. You're connected to mother in ways you can't even imagine. And she takes you deep down and through and she moves you. She moves you through this collective, through this fear, this this through the earth, through her by drinking her, and you being in this place, she just moves you. And with a shamanic practitioner alongside you playing music and singing, it moves you even more. It's very magical. Very super magical. Um if there's something you want to do, then something you should look into. Um, I have connections. I have people who could I can lead you to who will work. I personally will never administer that. It's not my calling. I can say that today. Maybe tomorrow it changes, but right now, it is not my calling. It's not my calling to learn. It's not my calling to understand that. It's my understanding just to know that that plant has a place in my heart. It has a place in my spirit and my soul. And it resonates in there. That's what I needed for my personal growth. It wasn't for me to take it and then got to teach everybody to do it. Because I have a different different styles of teachings that I need to teach and share to myself and others. The metaphysical community sometimes becomes very um, complacent. They become so complacent that sometimes we just do it out of routine. We just massage people and we just give Reiki to people. Not everybody, but there are. There are. Because it's human nature to feel that you're here and you don't move it along. So embrace the things that you do. Understand that it's these gifts are very precious. Everybody has gifts. Everybody has the magic to do different things. Everybody has this, these things that they can share with the world. But not everybody will. Not everybody's willing and not everybody's ready for that because for some people it's the journey to live life and to experience life and move through it and gain the pains and gain the laughters and the sadness along the way like we all do. But for some people that's all they, they, they were there for. There are others who step outside of that 
who step outside, they don't stop suffering. They don't stop quitting. They don't stop going. They also move through their line as well, through their sadnesses and through their... But in the same time, they're finding ways to help others, others to feel, you know, the emotions. Sometimes it's easier for someone who's had a traumatic experience to talk to other people who've had traumatic experiences because they can relate. But not every situation will be that way. Not every situation will be in that capacity. So I'm here to challenge you to look at life in a way that's very different. To be open. Be like the plant medicine. Be receptive. Know that you're not going to be for everybody. That you're not going to be the Mr. Fix-It or Mrs. Fix-It to everybody. A good practitioner, this is how you know if you have a good practitioner. They tell you, I don't, don't have your answer for you, but we can walk this journey together. And if I can't help you, I'll find someone else who can facilitate you and work with you. But if someone's always trying and experimenting new things, you know, that's okay maybe for for a little bit. But healing is important because the healing begins with you. It's your healing. It's all healing and self-healing. We have, we have to make those progressions. No matter if we have a teacher or students in front of us, we have to find somebody who guides us in the right direction. Sometimes a teacher, all the teacher is, is someone who guides you to the other person that you need to meet. Sometimes I'm not the person that needs to work with that particular person. I assess the situation and I say, hey, you know what? I can't do this, but I know someone who maybe be, can. And if they can't, I'm sure they know somebody they can. That's how practitioner, that's how the metaphysical community should be, in my opinion. To, for referrals, kind of like Western medicine does, we refer. When we don't have it, we can't do it, we refer. Super important because not all medicines that we do, they do something, but it may not be the right combination of things that they need at that moment. I don't know. Intuitively feeling. Intuitively, most medicine workers are intuitive, so they know, they have a feeling, they have an understanding. They have this aha, they have this, like, I understand what's going on. I, I, I get it. So we can refer. Referring is important. That's what I do. I don't try to take on every case. I don't try to take on every person because that's not, for me, it's not a logical thing. It's not It's not necessarily always right. Maybe I'm just the middleman, the metaphysical middleman. <laughs> I don't know. I'm that guy that connects people to other people. But if I can connect with you, then I work with you. But these plant medicines, you know, don't take them for granted. Don't take them. If you really want to do a live and you really want to do a living plant medicine work with something with these plants that are very powerful, then you need to contact people who have, have done it, where they've gone, and ask them questions. Ask the people who've had it. You'll get an array of different answers. And that's super important to understand. You know, the first time it was very, very, very powerful for me. It was very... They were both powerful, but it was just like very electric and very strong and very fiery and very angry energy. And the next time I did it, it was beautiful. It was very subtle, very keen, moving, traveling, colors, people, paper mache people. <clears throat> it was amazing. It's because there's more than one concoction in ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is not just one brew. Ooh, yeah, one brew. No, there's like... You can make over 10 different versions of ayahuasca and concoctions and where you want to go, where you want to travel. And they make heart medicine for your heart. Just open your heart enough. Not everybody's willing to go down that path. That path is very strong. When you go down that path, you know, you're going to see things, aspects of yourself that you were not even, didn't even think that was even possible. And then there's, there's these dark places that the plant will take you. You'll see that. You'll see it out of your peripheral. You look over there and you'll see that. And this darkness is there. And you have a choice. You have a choice to go down there and, ex and experiment or, or, or view or see. But not everybody's willing to do that. And it's hard. And you can stay in the colored path. But it's different for everybody. I'm just talking about me. Excuse me. So, look, look deep in there. Ayahuasca, peyote, San Pedro, even the cannabis, it all is from Mother Earth. 
And that medicine is very powerful. So treat it, respect it, honor it. You know, res respect is huge. Giving thanks, gratitude to these medicines. If you're going to deal with them and, and be involved with them, because they'll take you places. And when we don't set the right intentions and, and we don't set our heart in the right place, they'll take us to places that we, we, we didn't even know you existed. You can read doc, documentaries, you can study, you can you can see the horrific things that people have said about it. You can see the beautiful things that said about it. I'm here to tell you the beautiful things about it. Because for me, beautiful things happen. But part of me wanted to see the beautiful. But I was open. And you have to be open to what comes. You can set expectations, but the expectations will never meet what you really wanted to see. It's like a really amplified high definition TV they just even got brighter and things are amazing I saw faces on trees I saw faces in the trees looking back at me when I opened my eyes because when you open your eyes it's a whole different experience when you close your eyes it's almost two different experiences the world becomes so vibrant and it's become so different and you see the world through the eyes of the plants you feel the world through the eyes of the plants. This is my experience. You feel every tree. You feel every step you take. Everything is like... You see the people in front of you, but it's almost like they're not real. And everything else is real. And it's pretty amazing. I remember sitting there. There was a little... <clears throat> a little plant. <clears throat> excuse me. And it was growing in the middle of the path where everybody walks. And I sat there and I looked at the plant and this plant was looking back at me and it was vibrating. It was just like this, just vibrating. Was my vision vibrating? Was the plant vibrating? Was I connected to the plant? These are answers that I, I, I'm still working on, processing. This was last year. <clears throat> and I remember talking to this plant and wondering, but I felt its, I felt its separation from everything because its roots hadn't touched the other roots of the trees. And that's what it was telling me, that it knew that its days were very limited. And its only journey was to meet me that day. This little plant. It knew that it would never be part of the jungle, would never be part of the forest. It knew this. At a level that I can't even explain. Just because it knew where it was, where it sat and where it was buried... That it was going to be pulled eventually because it's on the path where he's walking. But it had its purpose. It hid its purpose and made its purpose. And then the wind would blow. I could hear the wind. The wind was my, my, my key, my messenger, constantly telling me. And I knew when it was time to move. I knew when it was time to get up and go. I was at the top of the hill and we had to get down. I said, we have to go. The two of us who were there. Because the rains are coming. And then as soon as we came down, the winds changed and it got louder. And it just, the trees were just talking. And then the rain came and the water came down. It wasn't a big one, but if it was a heavy rain, we could have been washed down, you know, to the river. And it was so powerful to see the connection. But the amazing part was to know that all these plants and all these trees were connected together. As my fingers are all connected and they were all just like moving it just blew my mind and then I finally came to the point in my journey as we're walking and um, I remember seeing these different aspects of myself and I saw this woman wailing I saw her she was wailing screaming and you know at that moment I just said Okay, I, I'm going to let go of whatever I'm holding on to. Because I'm obviously holding on to something that I don't need to hold on to. I don't know what it is, but I'm open to the, the, the whole possibilities that I want to heal and move forward. And I tell you, be careful what you wish for. Because as soon as I said that, it was like somebody took my mouth and just pried my mouth open. I felt, I felt like these little vines going across my arms like this. Just inner, like just a weaved. He 
coming through there. And I just felt like this, something moved my mouth open. And the next thing you know, involuntary purging. I was just throwing up. I felt like the exorcist, you know, the movie. And I just went, and just, just released, let go. And that lasted probably a good three, three, four minutes, maybe. That's a long time to be letting go of whatever's inside you. And, you know, when I thought I was done, it was just like, and I was just like, wow. And then eventually I remember getting, I wasn't down, but I was like leaned over and then I got up and then, and I just heard this laughing. It was like a laughing. And I don't know if it was the people in the camp laughing because I was throwing up in the woods there, but, but then I started walking and then the shaman came and he, he gave me a big hug. He's like, he's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. Because you've been holding on to that. And he goes, and he goes, yeah, you know, and he knows you're you're the anchor for all these people who came with you on this journey and this trip. He goes, but you don't have to be. Let them have their own journey. You protect them. He goes, he, they know that, but you don't have to be because there's, they're protecting you too. But let go. And you know, it was really powerful what he told me. He just said, let go and just be, be yourself. Just be free. And then for me, that was just like, yeah, just because I was a tour guide or my friends were here, I was preoccupied because they were my friends. I want to make sure they were safe and they were okay. Because that's just where the kind of person I am. And um, he's just like, just let it go. It's okay. And then we both walked back and, you know, people had smiles on their face and like, whoa, that was loud. I don't know how loud it was. It was obviously pretty loud. It was loud enough that, you know, people were concerned about me. But either way, it was, um, that's what I, that's the only part of the story. And I haven't, you know, I could go on longer, but I just wanted, those parts were important to share. Because it's about opening up to the plant medicines and all the plant medicines are around us. The tree in your yard's around us. When you feel the pity and you feel the, the pain of a tree being cut down, that's real. Because you know it's a living sentient being. It's it's it has a purpose on this earth. Even though it may be in the wrong place at the right time, or at the right place at the wrong time. I don't know however you want to look at it. But it knows. Plants know, they feel. So if you tell me that plants don't feel pain and don't feel sadness or remorse, I, I disagree with you. Maybe it's not the at the level the, uh, that we do as human beings, but it, they do. They do feel. They feel because they're part of us. They they go. They live through us. They move through us. We ingest them every day. Those who eat vegetables and those who don't, even if you eat bread, that's plant. You drink orange juice. That's part plant. You drink tea. That's plant medicine. You drink coffee. Plant medicine caffeine inside there you drink a soda there's some kind of chemical that has something to do it came you know from something from plants it's all there you know when you break things down all the cures for anything in this world are found in nature okay i'm a firm believer maybe some of you are maybe some of you aren't but there's a cure for everything on this planet if it hasn't already been found it will be found but I'm most positive that everything and every cure that there is possibly be is already exists today. I truly believe that. In big pharma, because they would lose trillions, zillions of dollars if they cured things. So that's why it's important for you to be an advocate for yourself, to do the research, to study. Western medicine has its place, like everything. Everything has its place, time, and purpose. But there are people, there are people who don't trust and don't believe in Western medicine. So for those of you who don't trust, I advise, advise in a way that's honoring and respecting. Study it, learn it. Don't go with the first thing. You have essential oils, that's plant medicine. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, it, you don't just need ayahuasca. You don't just need... San Pedro. You don't just need peyote. You have plant medicines in front of you that just release endorphins now. It release emotions in your body. Aromatherapy is huge. 
You know, so do a little research. Re that's the biggest part. Do research, study, learn something that you, you knew. You want to be in the field that you're working in? Like if you're a nurse, well, you go study to be a nurse, right? So you study all the aspects of being a nurse. That's what that means. If you want to be a doctor, then you study all the aspects of what that means. You want to be a construction worker? Same way. AC guy, he studies all the things about AC and some electrical and something. So learn your field. So those of you who are practitioners or want to be practitioners, study, learn, acquire the knowledge, then apply the knowledge, you know, and then execute it. No, you never stop learning. Because there was a time where you would go to the village and there would be one person, one, maybe one, maybe two. Then that person's job was to make sure that they had some kind of answer for you when you weren't feeling a certain way. And you can't just have one fix, one pill fix it all because it doesn't work that way. But sometimes the best medicine is understanding and listening to what someone is saying. That's very powerful medicine. And that medicine we don't use too much anymore in this society. The medicine of listening. Listening here, here, but here in your heart. Listening to what someone is actually truly saying to you. That's very powerful. Man. That's the most powerful medicine. The unconditional love medicine. Like your plant. Now, not all plants necessarily are necessarily the best for you. So that's why it's important to study. Important to learn. Poison ivy may not be the best for everybody. Get on your skin. There's a reason why, but you need to study why. And what are the benefits of that? Are there benefits in poison ivy? Some would say no, some would say yes. It depends. You know, lemon balm. Lemon balm is in the yard. Do you notice why there's not a lot of mosquitoes in your yard? Lemon balm. But you would have not known that if you hadn't done your research, or maybe if I told you. Take lemon balm, put it in your skin, keeps mosquitoes away. You don't have to use these pesticides that they sell you. Yesterday we were at soccer practice, and I had a parent tell me, Oh, would you like some bug spray? I was like, heck no. Because that goes into your skin. That goes into the, the, your body. It's absorbed. That penetrates. And he's talking, oh, he I said, did you wear cologne or anything? Or deodorant? Did you drink anything? Did you like alcohol, beer? Another plant medicine. And, you know, he, he I don't know if, what he answered. But either way, he goes, my teeth are chatter. When I, just, when I use this stuff, my teeth like chatter. Like, I'm like, well, I can't be good. I'm like that's like nervous system stuff. I didn't want to tell him that, but I was just like, I uh, just yeah, I'm, no, no, thank you. I'm I'm well. I didn't get bit by one mosquito. I find if I use that stuff, I get bit by more mosquitoes. So I don't know what's up with that. But I did mention beer and wine, okay? Because those are plant medicines. Those are essentials. Those are oils. Those those are essence of plants that you're drinking. So hopefully, you're enjoying the essence of plants. So plant medicine is everywhere. You know, use your imagination. Plant medicine is everywhere. Plant medicine is in clothing. You know, it's medicine. Do we thank our plants for... Thanks for the shirt, Mr. Cotton. You know? Or Mrs. Cotton. And that's that's something that as human beings we've forgotten to do. We, we don't, you know... Indigenous people are notoriously wonderful about that. You know? And I want to say more in the past than in maybe now... But they were very, very keen to that. They knew that they were, they had a relationship with their plants that they lived with. And they had to learn to live with those plants. And without understanding those plants, you know, it took a few people to die along the way to figure out, well, we better not eat that one. But that's how, that's how you learn. But you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have, you don't have to go and get sick or die or... Or have some, you know, some kind of poison that you can't, you know, rid out of your body. That's why it's important. Study. So you you have all kinds of resources you could use. You have other, you have herbalists, you have YouTube, you have Google. But, you know, when even when you Google this stuff or you research this stuff, make sure that you're you're going further. If you know someone personally who's worked this stuff, that's even better. That's even, even a better route. You know, if you're using essential oils... Ask the questions. What's in it? 
Okay, yeah, well, there's oregano in it, you know. But ask yourself, what's in it? What's the carrier? What's going on? What preserves it? You know, how long is it on the shelf? A lot of us don't, don't ask those questions. So I encourage you to um, be vigilant on the work that you do. So when you're out there and you're a practitioner, if you're not a practitioner, especially those of you who are practitioners, understand that people come for you and they're really trusting that you know what you're doing. You know, I'm just going to repeat what I said. When I don't know how to do something, I refer. And I refer in the circle of people that I, I'm friends with. And that's something to create a team, a mastermind group of people that you work with. Oh, I have Sally who does this. You know, oh, I have Michael who does this. And I do this. And, you know, this this isn't we're at it alone deal. We're all in this together. And we will we'll achieve peace one day. We're at peace right now, right? We're having a good time listening on the radio and the live stream. Peace is what we make it. So if we want peace, then we just need to do more of what we're doing talking communicating loving honoring respecting knowing but we, we can't do that when we can't do that it makes it very difficult very difficult i hope you guys have enjoyed what i've been talking about i know i don't have any way for you to respond back unless you put something in the chat in the live stream but um yeah i just want you to know that you have a relation a big positive relationship with the things around you when you're open to all the possibilities knowing that you know the plants in your backyard are just as important as an ayahuasca you know vine and leaf drinking journey so with that i want to say you know thanks for tuning in thanks for you know checking it out i really appreciate sharing the things that i've learned along the way and things have been taught to me along the way um some things come very natural and some things I've learned and I'm not ashamed to say that that's how we that's how we learn you know so you know go out there when you, when you go out there you know appreciate when you look at the green that's out there because for some of us it's gone after November if not sooner we don't see the flowers and the plants anymore we get a whole different version a different landscape a different scenery so go out there, be the change, be the changes, seasons changes, and just love and appreciate and gratitude's huge. Give thanks to your plants, give thanks to the medicines that are in front of you. You know, bless and honor them. Thank you for doing it, thank you for the healing. It goes a long way, in my experience. I'm only here to share my experience and the things that happen to me but when i give thanks when i honor them they they go a long way so with that i hope you enjoyed um naked shamanism episode nine um iggygarcia.com with insightsradio.com you can find out more information about the work i do and the people that i'm associated with i'm associated with a really group of people and uh with insightsradio.com we have a whole slew of people who have shows and things they share some of you are listening and some of you know these people so when you go up there and check it out so with that i want to say thank you very much and, uh, and you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon and um love you guys dearly and uh remember plant medicines everywhere all right take care